Mountain News, first at four, continues. Yesterday, Governor Andy Bashir highlighted decreasing COVID numbers across the Commonwealth. But how are we faring here in eastern Kentucky and are threats of a resurgence on the horizon? WIMT Zach Hawk met with regional health directors to find out. The governor reported on Thursday there have been over 9,000 deaths to COVID-19, with many coming to the Delta variant. And while cases, hospitalizations, and ICU incidents continue to come down, public health officials continue to urge caution. While hopeful that the decline will continue, there is concern that numbers could plateau at levels that still leave hospitals in bad shape. Wearing masks, social distancing, and self-monitoring for symptoms, along with quarantining as necessary, will help. We tend to see a pretty quick decline in case numbers, but then somewhat of a plateau that is higher than we were as far as cases go back earlier in the summer. Christy Green also tells me that she is very happy to see vaccination numbers continue to climb, and she thanks everyone in the community who has been helping in the fight against COVID-19. In Manchester, Zach Hawk, WYMT, Mountain News. And Zach will have more on the declining COVID numbers later at 6. Some of us starting to get the rain on out of here. Others, like us here in Hazard, not quite yet. We just had a downpour here at the station, but trust me, we're trying out as we head into the weekend. Mountain Parkway at Slade, just fair weather clouds, sun shining there on the Wolf Powell County line right now. Taking you to Buffalo Mountain, it's a slightly different story where we have some of that rainfall right now. That one shower just right over downtown Hazard not too long ago, sitting at 72, by the way. 73 Jackson, 71 Prestonsburg, and 69 in Pikeville, where the rain is still upon us. Go out to the west, though. Monticello is at 79, and Irvin is at 80. So you see the future, and it is to our west. Pinpoint Doppler out there right now. A few showers working on out of Pike and Martin counties. A couple more working into Lawrence County. But everything will be working on into West Virginia here shortly as we head on further to the south. few showers, parts of Leslie and Harlan counties, even into Letcher and Knott counties. And like I was talking about, one right on top of the city of Hazard as we speak. And one not too far away from Middlesbrough right now. Everything here is spinning on off to the north and east. We, sh we should head on out of this over the next couple of hours. A couple of more showers trying to get going across the bluegrass, but I don't think those will make it here. We're down into the upper 50s and low 60s for tonight. Showers on the decrease slowly at least during the evening, and I'll have the latest on what that means for some of our high school football games coming up in just a little bit. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. A new and one-of-a-kind family business is drawing a lot of interest in Laurel County. WIMT's Vivica Grayson gives us a behind-the-scenes look. The next time you're looking for something new to do, look no further than Fanny Carroll's Papa Picnic. After seeing and experiencing this idea in full display while visiting Virginia Beach, husband and wife Richie and Billy Swanner decided they wanted to bring something similar to the Laurel County community. Ran out of their backyard, the business offers various and customizable picnic concepts. Billy says people should come and check it out. I would say give Fanny Carol's a try. It's just a, it's a very unique experience. It's a wonderful time just to spend some time with your family. It's very intimate. You're in nature, which is beautiful. Um, the leaves are starting to change, so the landscape is, is really pretty. Um, and we just we want to serve you, so we hope that you will join us. Now Billy tells me she and her family have many ideas in the works for the future and she looks forward to serving new guests. In Laurel County, Vivica Grayson, WIMT Mountain News. And Billy says the business was named after her mother who died last year. It's going to be a busy weekend in Lexington with the fall meet at Keeneland and the UK LSU football game. There's been a steady stream of visitors to downtown coming from places as far away as Kansas, Louisiana, and Alabama. And with big crowds this weekend, restaurants are going to be busy. The outdoor seating was full this afternoon at Dudley's on Short. The game at 730 doesn't really help us, but Keeneland certainly does. So we're excited to have Keeneland back, even if it's 20 thousand people it's still more than we've had in two years so it's really going to be fun since we're still in a pandemic business owners say they're making safety a priority employees are still wearing masks and sanitizing frequently 
The House is expected to come back to Washington on Tuesday to pass a bill raising the debt limit and avoiding a default. That's because the Senate got past partisan bickering Thursday night and approved a short-term measure that raises the debt limit until early December. Republicans have been blocking the bill, but Minority Leader Mitch McConnell struck a deal with Democrats, allowing them to get the 60 votes needed to break the filibuster. That led some Democrats to claim victory and upset some Senate Republicans. I understand why Republican leadership blinked, but I wish they hadn't. I wish they hadn't because I believe we were on the verge of victory. Senate Republicans finally realized that their obstruction was not going to work. I thank, very much thank, my Democratic colleagues for our showing our unity in solving this Republican manufactured crisis. Democrats still need Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema in order to pass the president's multi-trillion dollar social spending bill. President Biden is pushing businesses to mandate COVID-19 vaccines for about 100 million working Americans or risk fines. And young children could also soon be rolling up their sleeves. CBS's Skyler Henry has the latest on COVID-19 nationally from Washington. President Biden touted vaccination rates while speaking about the latest jobs report. More than 186 million Americans are now fully vaccinated. And COVID cases are down 40% in the past month. The president says the Labor Department is working to prepare an emergency rule requiring companies with more than 100 employees to have vaccine or testing mandates. There's more work to do, including getting more people vaccinated. But we continue to make progress. At least 24 Republican-controlled states are already preparing legal challenges to the federal mandate, arguing the president is overstepping his authority. President Biden has stressed mandates are crucial to the economy, which struggled to add jobs in September as cases of the Delta variant surged. Hello. You getting your shot? Vice President Harris toured a vaccination site in New Jersey Friday, urging more Americans to roll up their sleeves. The message is this. Vaccines will save your life. Pfizer is inching closer to getting its vaccine authorized for emergency use for children between the ages of 5 to 11. Dr. Ashish Jha discussed a new development on CBS Mornings. My hope is with that authorization, 5 to 11 year olds should be able to get vaccinated pretty quickly thereafter. The FDA has promised to review Pfizer's data quickly and could issue a ruling by the end of the month. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Well, the CDC says its outside panel of vaccine advisors will meet later this month to discuss potential booster shots of Moderna and Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccines. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Attorney General Merrick Garland, and Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas are in Mexico City. They are meeting with their Mexican counterparts to discuss the U.S.-Mexico Bicentennial Framework for Security, Public Health, and Safe Communities. The agreement aims to coordinate security measures between the two governments. Dialogue between the officials will work to address the factors that create security challenges across the border. The U.S. is concerned with drug trafficking from Mexico, while Mexico is frustrated with firearms crossing over from the U.S. Two journalists are the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize winners for defending the freedom of press in their countries. Friday, the Norwegian Nobel Committee announced it is giving the prestigious award to Maria Ressa and Dmitry Meritov. The committee highlighted their efforts to, quote, safeguard freedom of expression in the Philippines and Russia. Ressa is the first woman to be awarded a Nobel Prize this year. In Pikeville, a new business incubation location has started and is opening today. Shops at 225 is billed as a new retail concept which hosts many small business startups under one roof in an effort to help them grow into successful businesses. The address, 225 2nd Street, was previously a retail store, but the Pikeville Main Street program has remodeled the nearly 80-year-old building and officials say the location redefines retail. It gives a lot of people an opportunity to have a small business, but what I think it does even more than that, it uh, gives downtown the opportunity to become a destination. Shops at 225 is scheduled to open at 5 p.m. about 20 minutes from now with a wine tasting and retail gating on Saturday starting at 11 a.m. We'll have more from the shops at 225 coming up at 6. 
The Prestonsburg community is in a festive spirit as the annual Jenny Wally Festival continues. WIMT's Buddy Forbes has more as the skies should begin to clear soon in Floyd County. Even the rain can't keep the people of Prestonsburg away from the Jenny Wiley Festival as people continue to gather downtown to kick off the autumn season the only way they know how. With songs and sizzling filling the downtown scene, the early rain was not much of an issue. The Jenny Wiley Festival is well underway for its third day of food and fun. An event that always serves as the official kickoff for the fall season in the Star City, bringing people from all around to keep the 40 year tradition alive. We're so excited about having these things happen. And, you know, again, it's just we want we want people to to just embrace our culture, embrace our history and embrace what we going on, got going on here today. Officials say the joy in the air has been a nice change of pace and they're looking forward to see who turns out tomorrow for the annual parade. In Prestonsburg, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. We'll have more about the festival and the tradition it brings coming up at 6. But next here on First at 4, a disappointing new report on the job market. We'll take a look at how much things have cooled off since the summer. And we'll continue to see skies slowly clear out through the nighttime hours. I'll have the details on that on the way. W